Hello and welcome to the TI Precision Labs hands-on experiment covering ADC power scaling. In this experiment we will use hand calculations to predict ADC system power for different amplifiers and different sampling rates. Then we will measure the system power and compare it to the hand calculations. In the last Precision Labs we described in detail the steps involved in calculating power for different amplifiers and different sampling rates. For this lab, we will quickly review and summarize this procedure. We will use hand calculations to find power for six different configurations. We will have a short discussion describing the operation of the measurement circuit. And finally, we will measure the power for these circuits and compare to the calculated results. For this experiment, we will measure three different amplifiers. Keep in mind that the quiescent current is inversely proportionate to the amplifier's bandwidth. Also, wide bandwidth amplifiers are required for high sampling rates. First, we will use the OPA320 for sampling rates of 1 megasample per second and 500 kilosamples per second. This amplifier has a bandwidth of 20 megahertz and a maximum quiescent current of 1.75 milliamps. Next, we will use the OPA313 for sampling rates of 100 kilosamples per second and 10 kilosamples per second. This amplifier has a bandwidth of 1 MHz and a maximum quiescent current of 90 microamps. Finally, we'll use the LPV811 for sampling rates of 1 kilosample per second and 200 samples per second. This amplifier has a bandwidth of 8 kHz and a maximum quiescent current of 540 nanoamps. In the next slide, we will use this information to calculate the system power. The table shows the calculated maximum power for all the different test configurations that we will measure. The example calculation shown is for the OPA320 500 kilosamples per second case. These calculations were covered in detail in the Precision Labs lecture on power scaling. Let's review the calculation. First, we calculate the digital communications power, denoted P dVdd. The digital current is calculated as C times V times N bits times FS, where C is the digital output line capacitance, V is the digital signal level, N bits is the number of ADC bits, and FS is the sampling rate. This equation is really just the charge multiplied by the maximum number of transitions per second on the digital output line. Multiplying the current by V dVdd converts to power. In this case, the supply is 3.3 volts, the digital output bus capacitance is 10 picofarads, the number of bits is 12, and the sampling rate is 500 kilosamples per second. The digital power is equal to 653.4 microwatts. P AVDD is the analog power for the ADC. It is calculated by multiplying the AVDD supply voltage by the current. The current is calculated using information from the data sheet and the sampling rate. The data sheet provides the current measured at 1 megasample per second, and this could be scaled by the ratio of the sampling rate to 1 megasample per second. Plugging in the numbers, you can see that the analog ADC power is 345 microwatts. Finally, let's calculate the amplifier power. The amplifier power is calculated by multiplying the amplifier supply voltage by the quiescent current. Notice that the amplifier power is not dependent on the sampling rate. In the example, 4.5 volts is multiplied by 1.75 milliamps to give a power of 7.875 milliwatts. These calculations were repeated for each amplifier and sampling rate. Later, we will compare these calculations to the measured results. This slide shows how the EVM measures current. The ammeter, circled in red at the top of the page, is used to measure the current flowing into the analog, digital, and amplifier supply. The shunt resistor converts the supply current to a voltage. Note that the shunt is jumper selectable for different current ranges. Also notice that the calibration position shorts out the INA input to allow measurement of the system offset. In the example shown, the digital supply current of 197 microamps flows through a 20 ohm shunt resistor to develop a 3.94 millivolt input voltage. The INA gain of 823 increases this to 3.343 volts. 
The attenuator then scales this according to the ADS-1220 input requirements. The ADS-1220 Delta Sigma converter was used as it naturally averages the input signal. Also, the filter at the input of the INA averages out transients in the current measurement. Keep in mind that the ADC conversion current is not a constant value but rather is a series of transient currents that is averaged. The same circuit at the top of the page is repeated for the amplifier and ADC analog channel. Finally, note that the calculations to convert the ADC-1220 measurements into power values is done automatically in software. For this experiment, we will be using channel 3 on the Precision Labs hardware. First, set the jumpers as shown here. Connect the PSI to the P-Labs board using the SMA cable and connect the PHI to the P-Labs using the channel 3 connector. Finally, connect the USB cables to the computer. Throughout this experiment, we will test different amplifiers. Always be careful to install the amplifier right side up with the label at the bottom of the coupon card. For now, you can leave the amplifier socket empty. Pause and connect the hardware. Now start the P-Labs power scaling software. If the hardware is connected correctly, you should see the green hardware connected indicator and the PSI controls should be colored teal. Pause and start your software. Before making any power measurements, we need to calibrate the system. This calibration will eliminate offset errors from the INA and ADC so that we will get the best accuracy. To do this, press the calibration button. Once you do this, you will see a window pop up that shows how the jumpers need to be positioned for this test. In this case, the input is set to AC in and the jumpers are all set in the cal position. Also, make sure that no amplifier is in the socket during this test. Press continue after the hardware is configured. Pause and calibrate the system. Now we are ready to start measuring power. First, we will measure the OPA320 and the ADC at high sampling rates. Press the 1 mega sample per second button to begin. This will bring up a window that shows how to set the jumpers and indicates that you need to install the OPA320 Good Filter 2 coupon board. Make these changes in the hardware and press continue. Follow the same procedure for the 500 kilosamples per second sampling rate. Pause and make these measurements. This slide shows the expected results for the OPA320. The table shows the measured currents and powers for the amplifier, ADC analog supply, and ADC digital supply. When we have completed all the measurements, we will compare this to the calculated results. For now, notice that the currents are hundreds of microwatts to milliwatts. The graph shows current versus sampling rate. Notice that the current for the amplifier is constant and not dependent on the sampling rate. The ADC current, on the other hand, scales with sampling rate. Finally, note that this test automatically controls many different parameters. For example, the sampling rate, number of samples, PSI controls, and all the calculations are automatically done in the software. Now let's change the amplifier and measure power for 100 kilosamples per second. Press the 100 kilosample per second button to begin. This will bring up a window that shows how to set the jumpers and indicates that you need to install the TLV313 low power coupon board. Make these changes to the hardware and press continue. Pause and make these measurements. Let's continue measuring the TLV313 at 10 kilosamples per second. Press the 10 kilosample per second button. This will bring up a window that shows how to set the jumpers and indicates that you need to install the TLV313 low power coupon board and change the jumpers. Now the amplifier jumper is in the high position, but the ADC analog and digital current jumpers are in the low position. Make these changes in the hardware and press continue. Pause and make these measurements.
This slide shows the expected results for the TLV313 and OPA320. Notice that the currents are in tens to hundreds of microwatts. The graph shows current versus sampling rate. Notice that the current for the TLV313 is significantly lower than the OPA320. Again, note that the amplifier current is not dependent on the sampling rate. The OPA320 was used at high sampling rates because it has a wide 20 MHz bandwidth so it can achieve good settling accuracy. The TLV313 has a 1 MHz bandwidth so it can achieve good settling accuracy at lower sampling rates. Finally, notice that the ADC current scales linearly versus sampling rate. Finally, let's change the amplifier and measure power for 1 kilosample per second and 200 samples per second. Press the 1 kilosample per second button to begin. This will bring up a window that shows how to set the jumpers and indicates that you need to install the LPV811 low power coupon board. Note that the jumpers are all in the low position to measure the low current. Make these changes to the hardware and press continue. Follow the same procedure for the 200 kilosample per second sampling rate. Pause and make these measurements. Now we have completed all the experiments. At low sampling rates, the power levels are hundreds of nanowatts to microwatts. This is thousands of times smaller than at full sampling rate. You can clearly see the linear current scaling versus sampling rate for the ADC. Also, you can clearly see that the current is constant for each different amplifier. Comparing the measured amplifier current to the datasheet shows that the current is the expected amplifier quiescent current. To compare the measured results to the calculated results, you should export the data to Excel. To do this, highlight the power cells in the GUI and right click. Select Export Data to Excel. This will cause an Excel spreadsheet to pop up with the measured data. Now we can paste this into our table for comparison. Pause and export the data to Excel. This table compares the calculated results to the measured results. Here, the example measurements are pasted in. It is important to note that the calculated results use the datasheet maximum values. So you should expect that the calculated results are larger than the measurements. A quick review of the data shows that the measurements are smaller than the calculated maximums as expected. Nevertheless, you can see that the calculated and simulated results are in the same range and the measured trends match the calculated trends. Also, notice that the amplifier current is only dependent on amplifier type and not sampling rate. Finally, notice the profound impact that changing the sampling rate has on total power. At full sampling rate, the total power is 7,746 microwatts. And at 200 samples per second, the power is 2 microwatts. Now you could paste your measured results into the table. You should confirm that your results are in the same range as the hand calculations. Pause and paste your results into the table. That concludes the hands-on experiment. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks for your time.